In the 1940s, Abbott and Costello were a national craze. Not only were they movie stars, but they had their own radio show with NBC and continued to play clubs. Even Washington needed their services. When World War II broke out, Hollywood, including Abbott and Costello, pitched in to raise money. During that summer of 42, they visited 80 cities in a month and raised $85 million in, for the government in war bonds. They attracted huge crowds who came out to see them because they were so immensely popular. All the exhausting travel took a toll on Lou. At age 37, he became seriously ill with rheumatic heart disease, and it looked as though the partnership might come to an untimely end. For nine months he languished in, in bed, and it was a terrible thing. It was right at the height of the career. Things were to have been done, and it was all put on hold. My father wouldn't continue because he said, if Lou's not here, I'm not going to be here. And uh, that's just how he felt. They were a partnership, and that's how it was going to be. Lou would be plagued with bouts of rheumatic fever for the rest of his life. But now, his health was improving. A steady stream of stars, including Lou's hero, Charlie Chaplin, wished him well during his convalescence. And he loved playing with his young son, Lou Jr., nicknamed Butch. In November 1943, just days before Butch's first birthday, the little boy accidentally drowned in the family pool. Lou Costello was changed forever. He was devastated. He was very depressed. He was a little less light in, in, in nature, I believe, from that point on. It was, it was his Pagliacci. It was his tragedy. He never did get over it. I was to do Abbott. He just accidentally drowned in the swimming pool. No details. Nothing. Now I'm freeze framing it right here because I want to show you some things in this one photograph that is being shared in this bio of Costello. Now notice that he's holding in his hand Anderson's fairy tales. He's trying to tell you something. It's a fairy tale. It's nonsense. Now he's holding in his arm uh, supposedly their child, Lou Costello Jr. Now whether the fairy tale is that the child does not exist or the child did not drown, I don't know. But in and of itself right now you are being told that there are fairy tales and there are certain things in this actual photograph that are very peculiar and I'm going to show them to you right now and then I'm going to take you to some photographs of the photograph okay so first of all the child has his fingers on the book. Okay? And those fingertips look a little peculiar. Secondly, he's not really reading at all. He's just looking at the baby. And she's just looking at the baby. So, the child is not able to comprehend a written text being read. It doesn't mean one shouldn't read a text to a little child. It's just to say that whatever is in here is not really for the child. It's for you. Fairy tales. Okay? It's a tale. The devil is in the tale. The details. Now there's several things I'm going to point out to you that are pretty peculiar about this photograph. Okay? Now the biggie that I'm going to show you later, but you can maybe even see it right now, is take a look at the child's hair. 
This seems to indicate some type of a horn. All right, now you might want to dismiss that, but you can't dismiss this right here. Okay? That's not natural for a baby. All right? Now I'm going to show you later. I think it's a rat. <laughs> I'm going to blow it up for you and show you later. All right? Now look at her dress, or actually his dress. Remember, it's always a reverse in Hollywood. This is the man, and this is the woman. Okay, it's a reverse. Look at that short chin. I mean, neck. Look at that short neck, and look at this longer neck here. Okay, so it's always a reverse. This is the man, and this is the woman. But look, we'll call her her for the moment, and play along. Look at her dress. These are triangles or bells. Now also, let's go down here where it appears like her hand exists. But it, it really is very peculiar because it looks like a mishmash of something right down here. Look at this. What is that? Right down here. Below his arm and by her dress. What is going on down here in this corner? In this region right here. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is, uh, in just a minute, we're going to jump to some photos of the photo. I also like to call your attention to the fact that uh, there seems to be like a really strong light illumination here on the child. If you look here, almost like a sunrise or sunset. And then if you look here, these are shadowy figures in the background. Like they're encased in a shadow of darkness. So it's kind of like darkness and light, dualism. All right, so let me try to take you to some photos now, and let's see what we can see on those photos. Okay, once again, uh, here we have what I would say this is a rat right here. This is a photo of what was on the screen. This is a rat, I think. It's not normal, okay? Now that's a blow up of that photograph. So you gotta come over here, over to the right, and take a look at it. What does it look like to you? It looks like a little mouse or a rat, or possibly a fish. <laughs> These are like fins. Okay, whatever this is, it is not normal. Now, another thing that's pretty peculiar is uh, the ear of the baby. Does seems to be misplaced or not there at all. This kind of looks like an ear right here. And then there's, there's like...